Good morning everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So this is day two, turn two of Conflict of Heroes, the Storms of Steel, third edition. Uh, just a couple points to clean up before we proceed. Uh, first, was when I was looking at the book for the scenario, it says uh, rounds two through five, satchel in either hex for counting victory points. When I first set up, my first thought was, oh, like it would start here because that's where it's pointing. But, you know, if you just read a little bit better than I did, it's the, the documents join here in this spot right here with the submachine gun unit that comes onto the map. And so that, that person has to make it to the stone building. Okay, so that, that's where that is. It enters there. Um, and then when we count the victory points, if the Soviets control the satchel control marker in either hex, seven, or eight, then they're going to get their uh, victory points. So what I have to do is when the Soviet submachine gun unit comes on with the satchel charge, just spend a lot of points to get them up here to the building quickly so that they can start generating some points. That's, uh, yeah, that I think is how that's supposed to be. Uh, again, could be wrong, but that's my, that's my understanding this time around. So hopefully I've got that correct. The other thing was a comment. It wasn't bad, it was just, you know, I guess my using the little suffocating bag that comes with the box was not as impressive as a draw bag as, say, using one of the beautiful Crown Royal draw bags. So I have transferred all of those infantry people counters to a new draw bag. So that's an upgrade. I had more of those than I thought I had. Maybe more than I should admit to having. But I've got some of those. Then another comment came in and I thought it was a good comment because I I still could be doing this wrong but I thought I had it right. So I'm going to borrow from the box here a couple of units. Now the the thing was between spent and stress and someone said I don't think you move the stress marker from unit to unit as they do stuff. Alright so here's here's my thinking on it and let me just zoom into these two folks so we can you know talk about them right we'll come back to the game in a second here make sure power still plugged in all right now let me make them facing legal hex side I'm gonna space them out so let's pretend we've got these two heavy machine gun units out here doing their thing so if this guy takes an action for instance or gal I don't know who they recruited but let's say this unit here is going to do some actions and they say fire Okay, so that's my two two action points there to fire. Two is really low. That's better than infantry. Wow. Uh, so he opens up, they open up, and I roll. Now, if I get the two, which is that number there, then they are spent. So there's no marker for spent. You just flip them. And then they get a stress. They get the stress because this is a temporary condition. Stress does not stay the spent will pretty much stay the entire turn. You know, you have to use caps to make actions a zero point cost in order for this unit to do something once it's spent. But stress goes away. And the way it goes away is that you have one turn in which that unit doesn't do anything because uh, it's basically just them catching their breath. So if I, let's say I do an action, and then the Soviet player does something, and I come back to the German player, if this unit does something immediately again, like let's say they're fresh, because I'm trying to race them down the road to get their satchel to the building, the stress will stay, and the stress adds one action point to cost whatever it is they're doing. But, so here's what I was doing yesterday. I was bouncing back and forth between units, trying to... Uh, not overly stress anybody, right? Sometimes I had to, but so for instance, here's what I would do: action with that unit, stress. Soviet player takes a turn. 
then I would do an action with somebody else. Now, instead of taking the stress off, taking it into the discard pile because that unit was no longer stressed because they didn't take a consecutive action, I would then, you know, and then grabbing a stress marker from the discard pile and sticking it on that unit, I just simply hopped it over. You know, just, just kind of cut out a move. So, action was stressed, Soviet player took a turn, comes back to the German player, activate a different unit to do something, thus he had a moment of rest, lost the stress, but now because this was the unit that currently did something, I just moved the stress marker over. That's my understanding of, of the stress and whatnot. And then spent, that's a permanent condition, so that will stay there until the next turn, in which case everybody becomes fresh and ready to go again. Hopefully, I explain that proper, and hopefully my understanding is correct on that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and reset for the next turn, and we'll get going. All right, we're all ready to begin. But I did, I did forget one thing I wanted to talk about before we start. The cards. I knew I was going to forget that I have cards. It's just when I play solo, it happens, okay? Um, but the Soviets did have an adrenaline card that we could have played. So when I had moved a unit in to do the close assault, and they ended up being spent, I then could have used the adrenaline because it says a spent unit may take one free action of no cost and zero caps, which is fine because the, the Soviet player still had a couple of cap points, but I could have initiated that attack. Now, I've gone ahead and I, I did think about this last night. I thought, well, should I just you know, go back, kind of rewind the clock a, a minute and do it anyway? Or just go forward as we are. I think I'm just going to go forward as we are. The Soviet player is still in a very strong position. And so that free action might come in handy later. So I still got to remember that the German player has a swift action. Take two consecutive turns. So I got to remember that. Now the cleanup. There's actually several things that happen at the end of a turn for cleanup. I did advance my turn track here by one just so I, I didn't forget about it. Um, but we got to flip all the spent units to their fresh side because they are fresh and ready to go. Still wounded. Got to do a rally for that. And I just got to remember the facing because facing in the assault is still important. So I just got to carefully try to keep that correct. Oh, I got to flip them too. Flip. Next time what I'll probably do is, is do all of that off camera, but just kind of showing you some of the things you got to do. Then, um, yeah, the victory point, nobody earned a victory point. I didn't kill anything yet. The satchel charge didn't come on, uh, but we do reset our caps back to six. No casualties, so everybody gets their full six. And I know the camera zoomed in a little bit, so you can't see the trackers off to the side. Um, but we do have reinforcements coming on. So the German player gets two reinforcements. These are just standard infantry. Now they don't come on the board yet. I'm going to put them off of the edge of the map board. And because I've got the camera zoomed in, you don't see the deployment spot. I'm going to move it just a little bit there. So they're going to sit right there until they're ready to come on. Then the Russian player, same thing. He gets the submachine gun unit with the orders, which is a control marker, and they're going to sit off to the side of the board until they're ready to move on. And then I, we're going to now, I think that's all of the important things there. Going to check for initiative. Now the game does start the, the Soviet player with the one victory point. So they had, um, well, yeah, they had initiative last time when the game started. Oh, the Germans had the initiative. But see, now, because they have one victory point, they're kind of ahead on victory points. What happens is the rules say that the non-victory point holding person rolls two dice. And if they roll seven or higher, they seize the initiative. And they can spend two caps to make that happen. 
and the German player is going to do just that. Mm, yeah, we're going to push our luck. So the German player spends two cap points because they really want to seize the initiative and initiate some close assault there to take out some people. So rolls two dice. Ooh, I didn't need to uh, have spent the caps, but it it sealed the deal. So the German player will actually. Oh, where did I put my little ha ha ha? Boop. They're gonna start with the initiative. All right, now let's get in here. Let's bring this in a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Because this is where some of the action is happening right now. I'm going to, again, do my best to keep this. Oh, hold on a minute. Oh, oh man, I forgot. These guys are suppressed, which means they suffer a minus two right off the bat. Now, we have to take a moment, though, to think about this. I'm going to go for it. Let's not think about it. Let's just do it. These guys are in a desperate situation. They've got some penalties to their combat, but they're hoping that the close assault bonus will uh, help counteract that penalty. Uh, so here's what I mean by that. First, they got to choose a target. Since there's multiple, oh, it's actually two fresh rifle units that's worse than I thought it was these guys are in a terribly terribly desperate situation alright so they could rally oh I did forget cards hold on since the German player won initiative let's see what they get can this help them it's a swift action take an extra turn so they have another one of those I gotta remember that because I might need to do that right now I'm gonna do that I was gonna show you what I'm gonna do uh, command action for the Russians. They get a free. My goodness, I'm just giving them free. A fresh or spent unit may take one free action of any cost. Holy cow. That's going to be, these are going to be very, very important. Okay. We're going to try and rally this person first. We're going to try to rally him. Now, they need a seven to rally. Now, this is also, um, I, I, want, I forgot if it's a five, the rally, is it take five, I don't know why I can't remember that off the top of my head. It is, it takes five of something, let's see, what is it? So, consent terrain, um, but we got... Now, rally, okay, hold on, let me double check the rally real quick. Oops, sorry, I don't want to hold you here while I read. Okay, first things first, they can't rally because they, they have enemies. It makes sense. I was hoping they could do a last hurrah rally kind of a thing. Uh, not happening. And then the cost, it, it's five action points. So, they would, you could spend some, um, you know, your command action points to reduce that five, because that's a lot. Uh, basically, they if they succeed... You know, they got to roll really well, like a seven, not to become spent after they did the rally. But, so here we go. They can't rally. They're just going to have to fight it out. All right, here we go, fighting it out. Uh, they're going to attack this infantry unit on top of the stack, just because I can look at them. So, first of all, there is, they were in a wood building. Okay, so that's going to add one to the defense there of the, the infantry. Uh, it attacks the flank, so that gives them a 12. I need like a little marker, but let's try to remember that. 12 defense. Now, this Rush, the German player has a 5 attack. So, 12 minus 5 is 7. Alright? But, I've got to subtract 2 to their offense because they're suppressed. So, that bumps it up to 9. Okay? You with me so far? We should be at 9. Then, because it's a, they're the attacker, they get a, a bonus of four. So that brings them down to a five. They need to roll five on two die six or higher. They're going to spend one cap because that's a, a die six roll. Now they need a four or higher. I feel pretty confident that we're going to get a four or higher on these two dice. Which, because the camera's zooming in, I'm just going to push these up a little bit. Eight. So even though under desperate struggle, they 
are able to hurt that top unit. So I grab out of the Crown Royal bag there. You know what? That looks like a pretty kind of blue. It's purple. Interesting. All right. They themselves are now suppressed. What? And I'm going to keep them flip because they're, you know, facing a different direction. Wow, amazing. All right, so then the German player. Now, I've moved them off of that stack because it's going to be awkward here in a second for me to keep track of and balance all that. Now, that for them to attack, it's three APs. All right, so let's see. If I, I need to roll a four or higher not to be spent. They rolled a one. Oof. All right, well... They're spent and stressed, which narratively could make sense. They're under a lot of stress. They got to, they're surrounded. They're fighting desperately for their own survival. They've, they've whipped out their trench shovels and they've got bayonets and they've got grenades and they're just now I did have as a bonus, it says, let's read the card because I'm going to remember I got cards, right? And it does say you can play as many bonus cards as you want. Swift action. Take extra turn. Take two consecutive turns. Skipping the opponent's turn. Turn actions may be taken by different units. So I could, if I wanted to, take another action with someone else. But this unit is going to keep keep on trucking. Uh, but no, because it's not a free. Well, how many action points would that be? So if I wanted that unit to go again, they're spent. So I'd have to spend three cap points just to initiate an attack. But then they're stressed. Uh, yeah, they're stressed. So that'd actually be four cap points. I don't have enough cap points to act again with that unit. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put that on hold for a moment. Now I'm going to take this stress marker off because I know I'm not going to act with them consecutively. And I'm going to put this stack back on. Man, I'm going to try not to make a mess out of that. And shoot, even there got issues. They can't move, but they can fight. So what I will do is use a swift action on this unit here. It does cost one cap, so I'm reducing my cap cost thing tracker. Oop. Putting this into a discard pile I just now created. And this unit is going to attack that machine gun unit. All right, go big or go home. We're going big. Now, um, five firepower plus three for being adjacent, so that makes it eight firepower. I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna. I'm gonna spend one cap because we're gonna. We're gonna increase the die roll on that right so that's going to give us a, a nine essentially and i'm in the front arc of this maxim machine gun unit so they're going to be using their 12 defense and they're in a little building and that little building gives a uh, one bonus so it's 13 so what did i say this was nine and then 13 minus nine was that four man that's I got this. Now remember, if I roll an 8 or more, the maximum machine gun unit is destroyed outright. Now to be honest, when I did the close assault, I forgot what number I needed to do the outright destruction. So if somebody rewinds the video, um, I rolled an 8 and I forgot what it was that they needed to hit. So it's possible that I should have destroyed that Soviet unit outright Soviet Union outright <laughs> all right so let's see if we so these guys they, they're they're feeling a little stressed out and they fire oh my gosh I didn't need to spin any cap rolled an 11 so what did we say if my math is good and it's early it could be wrong but I think I needed a four to hit I rolled an 11 that my friends is well beyond the four needed that unit is destroyed, which immediately shifts the Germans to uh, the victory point tracker. The victory is now in their hands. The Maxim machine gun unit goes off to the Soviet cap tracker. 
So now the Soviet player only gets five cap points in a turn, not six. And I got a check for spent status, so that was three action points. Roll to one. So they are spent, and because they just did something, they are now stressed. Wow, amazing. All right, now check it out. Check it out, y'all. Because I can use as many bonus actions as I want, and that's a bonus action. See, it's like purple, but I'm looking through my camera screen and it shows blue. Very interesting. All right, or maybe it's blue when it gets uploaded to YouTube. Who knows? Okay, so I'm going to do this again. Well, just two consecutive turns. It says take two. Would I be overdoing it if I did this again? Yeah, let's do it because it's a bonus action. I can do whatever I want, and it's going to be one cap. All right, we're going big or go home. I'm going to put this on the discard. And we're going to go back to this German unit because he is no longer... Oh, wait. No, I forgot. We can't, right? Because he was spent. Gosh darn it. I don't have enough cap points to make that a free action. So never mind. We're going to hold on to that. My bad. All right. Then it does go to the Soviet player. So we did take two, two turns for the German player, but that did cause both of those units to be spent. All right. So we're going to go back to the melee, though. Here comes the close assault, but here's the thing, right? We've got a fresh unit. Oops. Just trying to keep their facings. All right, we've got a fresh unit. He's fresh, but he's wounded, right? And he's got the suppressed on him. So this rifle unit is going to be the one that attacks this spent German unit that is wounded, because if he successfully hits, unit will be eliminated. So we've got um, defense of 13, well, of 12, because you attack the flank. They're in the wood building. So that gives them 12. All right, good, 12. Then the Russian, well, Soviet player has 4 plus 4, because they're the attacker and the assault. That gives them a total of 8. So right now we're looking at a difference of 4. They need a 4 to hit. They're going to spend a cap point and make that a 3. So, I need a three to hit, seven. Oh, you know, let's not spin a cap, because all it takes is one hit, they're gone. I don't have to try and get that magical plus four. So, they just need a four to hit, which they got easy, and I just knocked them out. They rolled a six. So, this German unit is gone, and they we get rid of their wounded marker. That goes back in the bag. Oof tense fighting all right and then they're gone and the victory point tracker goes back to the soviet player oh no what do we do this is bad for the german player they got fewer resources now well they were down they had fewer people in the first place so a little tough um dang all right so oh but now we gotta check if that spent them uh it's four action points for the Russian player, so they need to roll a five or higher. They they did. They rolled a five or higher, and I forgot to flip that to their side because they had the initiative there. All right, so they're not, not spent. You know what I'm going to do just for balancing act? That was the wounded unit. This was the unit that attacked. They're going to get the stress marker. All right, now we flip it back to the German side. What will the Germans do? Well, I could not... I um, I don't have enough cap points to rally this unit, so they're kind of done. So I'm going to have to carefully move the camera north. Eh. And we're going to bring them on. Now, when they come onto the board, one, they have to come onto a full hex. And they can actually come on anywhere along here. We're going to come up. Hmm. I don't want to come through the field. Because that is. Oh, that costs nothing extra. It says corn or wheat, zero AP. This must not be time of year for corn to hinder movement. Um, but if we take the road. Oh, choices, choices, choices. All right, hold on. Let me think about this. All right, after 
verifying. The mission takes place in July, so it says wheat fields are actually grown up. And that means units moving through there. Um, oh, I mean, I'm looking at the chart here. Uh, they get concealment. Oh, conceals, but not block. It does say blocks foot unit line of sight. All right, so here's my hope. Here's my hope is I'm just going to move the Germans through here and get them down here to where they can maybe come through the woods again because this is all open otherwise no cover and they would just be shot up horribly so we're going to try and move them here so they can get close to maybe just push through here we're going to see alright enough talk let's do it so they don't come on half hexes they actually come on on a whole hex so they're going to pop on right here now, it doesn't cost action points, they don't have to make a spent check, but they are stressed. Now, because a different unit did an action, this unit um, that you can't see, oh, right here, right? They lose their stress because they're not doing something. And because they did something, they gain the stress. We flip back to the Soviet player's side. The Soviet player does have enough cap points to uh, well, well, yeah, they don't need the cap points to rally. Oh, what's the right? But what they're going to do is they're going to attempt to rally that unit. And they need a seven. Let me go ahead. I'm going to try and shift the camera back so we can see a little bit more here. Right there. Oh, all right. Uh, they need a seven. They will spend a cap point to make that a six. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, we rolled a four. So they failed that. And that's a five capper, five action point thing. So we need to roll a six or a seven not to become uh, spent. Rolled a two. So they're spent. They attempted the rally. They failed. Oh, man. And technically, they become stressed. So, boop. Then we go back to the German player. We're going to bring the other infantry on. So here comes their buddy. Boop. And since that unit didn't do anything, they lose their stress. But because that unit did something, they get the stress. Then we go back to the Soviet player side. All right. This unit seizing the opportunity to try and eliminate another German unit will fire here so they are well within range they have a range of six they're not adjacent so no bonus as far as that goes um, so they have a four now this is coming into the this is coming into the flank uh, because here's the front arc so they're not in those front hexes so this would be a flank shot so they only get an 11 defense and they're out in the open and they're pinned so they can't move so they're stuck there so we need let's see 11 it's a seven they need a seven or higher they're going to spend a cap point they're going to make that a six we're feeling lucky let's do it Ooh, they rolled a five they rolled a five all right now that's a miss so we got to check for spentness. Uh, they have four action point costs to attack, so they need to roll a five or higher. They rolled a three, so they are spent. And we're going to transfer ownership of the little stress marker because now that unit didn't do an action, so they rested, but now they are stressed. Now, let me look at my cards. Adrenaline, one free action. Well, that's an action. That's not a bonus action, so they're going to have to wait. I didn't realize we had so many free actions for the Soviet player, which will be good for uh, these spent units, actually. A fresh or spent unit. And, and the adrenaline specifically is a spent unit. So this is this would be good for them. Okay, now we got to go back to the German player. All right. Uh, we're moving up. Moving up. So we're going to move through here. It didn't cost anything extra that I saw on the movement chart. Uh, the wheat field, 
yeah, it didn't show any extra movement points, so they're just kind of walking through. It's just some, some wheat. And it's one movement, one action point to move. So we roll. They're not spent, but they do get the stress now because they did an action. Then we're back to the Soviet player. Soviet player, because this, we got a fresh unit here, they're going to now shoot. Boom. Uh, again, they're not adjacent, so they don't get an adjacent bonus, but they have a 4. This time, the defense is a 12, so they need an 8 to hit. They're going to spend 2 of their cap points to make that a 6. Alright, can they get it? Oh, they did. They didn't need to spend it. So what did I say I needed? I dropped it to a 6. We rolled an 11. Well, beyond being an outright kill, because we would have beat the number by 4, uh, they were already wounded. So the Germans take another devastating loss. That gives two victory points to the Soviet player. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Back into the Crown Royal bag. Now we're going to check to see if they're spent. They need a five or higher. Uh, they roll a two. So this Soviet Union, Soviet Union, Soviet unit is now spent and they get the stress because they just stressed themselves out. They had a moment to rest. All right, then we go back to the German player and they can hear the cries and screams of their comrades, but they're pushing forward. They're gonna come, they're gonna move here because we're gonna rely on this to block line of sight by one hex. Otherwise they could shoot into it, but we're gonna try and skirt around a little bit. But looking back and seeing their spin, but remember I got all these free actions, uh, so we're gonna do that. All right, does that cause them to be spent? They moved one hex, they rolled a six, they're not spent. But you know, I tell you what, uh, that little stress marker is gonna get to me there. All right, back to the Soviet player. They, they can't see, they're feeling pretty good, so they're gonna take they're free actions and they're going to try and rally the unit below. The unit below needed a seven to rally. So first of all, we're going to take the adrenaline. A spent unit may take one free action of any cost and it's zero cap. So they're going to use that. I have one cap point. So we're going to see if we can rally on a six plus. We rolled a 10. Boom. So they are no longer wounded, uh, but they are now stressed, so I'm just going to leave the stress marker on top of there. Alright, then we go back to the German player. So now, the Soviet player is in a very strong position. I don't see how the German player is going to make this work out. It's very nail-biting tension. Alright, so the German player is going to move that unit there. They're going to see if they become spent. I rolled a three, uh, so they're still they're still moving. All right, we're gonna go back to the Soviet player here in just a second. Boo, boo, boo. All right, I had to clear my throat there. Um, yeah, I think I'm back to the Soviet player. Soviet player, now, just a quick thing. This is something I don't remember from before. There's a stall action and a pass. Now remember, if both players pass two consecutive turns in a row, then that that whole round is over. But if you do a stall, you can stall with a unit, which costs one action point. So you'd have to check to see if they're spent, but that keeps the turn going. All right. So if you feel like you need to keep things going, you don't want to pass early, Stall is an action, but we're actually going to pass because I know I'm not going to stop moving these units until they are somewhere better. All right, so Soviet player passes. Oh, Soviet player does not pass. I forgot. I've got to get the satchel charge on here. Not the satchel charge, but those bags, the documents. Okay, so Soviet player is on the board. He gets the stress marker, and he's got to book it to that building. So he can start getting some uh, victory points. Okay, now we go back to the German player. I totally forgot about him. Okay, German player. They're just going to kind of move back and forth here. So he moves. Oops, let's see if he's spit. He needs to roll a two or higher on this die. He 
He rolls a three, not spent. The stress, we know he's stressed, so we're just going to leave that there. Then back to the Soviet player side. Soviet player turn. Oh, you can barely see him on the board. He's on the board now, but he's going to move one. Boop. Oh, but he is stressed. That's okay. I need to roll a three or higher. I feel pretty good. I think we will be okay. Oh, are you kidding? I rolled a one. Well, he would have failed anyway. That's just my luck. So he actually is spent. I'm not sure how that works out, but that was tiring moving down that road. They must have been running from somewhere off board. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put these two deceased German units on the cap tracker. So that means next turn, or next round, the German player only gets four cap points to spend on things. Yeesh, they're really at a disadvantage. All right, so then we go back to the German player, and he's going to move this not well. Yeah, we're just going to move. They're the same unit, and just piggyback and forth here. All right, so are they spent? They are spent. They finally ran out of action points. And then they're stressed because they're the one that moved while he caught his breath. Okay, back to the Soviet player. Command action. One free action. A fresh or spent unit may take one free action at any cost. Because they are running for that building just as fast as they can. Woo! And they're already stressed and spent, so they just took a free action. Then, back to the German player. He's got a unit that's still fresh. Uh, I only have one cap point. That'll be enough just to like modify a die roll. It's not going to let me move somebody for free. So they're going to move. And they rolled a five, so they're not spent. But they're gonna they're gonna keep this stress marker with them. Back to the Soviet player side. One more free action. We've got to get those orders up into the building. That was bad luck for the Soviet player because uh, normally you don't don't get spent off of one move action, but they did. Had they remained fresh for a while, I probably could have waltzed him all the way up the road and got into the building and started accumulating victory points from right now. But a stroke of bad luck, and the Soviet player is going to have to wait a turn to start accumulating those sweet, sweet free victory points. All right, so then we go back to the German player. And the German player, he's... Yeah, you could do a stall I could pass like I I could pass at this point with the German player because if I pass that stress marker goes away but then the Soviet player could pass and then that would end the turn and I'm trying to get that German player up here that's how you stretch out those five rounds that you have is you do a lot of manipulating of action points and stress to try and get as much done in that one round so the German player is going to push it. We don't want to risk the Soviet player ending the round early. I only got a couple turns to make this happen, you know, to get those orders. So we're going to move up one, trying to keep line of sight blocked from somebody. Actually, we're going to move here, trying to keep the facing good. Ah, they're facing there. All right, now. I have to roll a three or higher because they are stressed. They rolled a one. All right, well, that would have failed regardless. So they, because, you know, one, one action point to move rolled a one. They're spent and stressed. So they're done. Soviet player is out of card, see? So at this point, he would have passed. And that would have, that would have been bad for the German player. So anyway, we've, we've gotten up closer but the Soviet player is still in a very strong position. So I'm going to pause, freshen up the, the board, and we'll come back. All right, I have re-centered the camera a little bit so that everything is focused here on the board. Uh, normally, I probably would have stopped because that was a full turn. That was actually a full turn, even with all the talking. That 
that probably went longer than usual because you know I talk a lot um, but we're actually gonna do one more turn here and this might be the last turn I do of this scenario because I really don't think that those two poor rifle units are gonna do much but we'll play it out now I did advance the turn tracker I've reset the cap points so the German player only gets four because they've suffered two casualties Soviet player gets five because they've suffered one casualty and um, I didn't see anything about stress coming off so I'm gonna leave the stress markers there and the German player is gonna try to seize initiative they're not gonna spend any cap points to seize initiative I don't think they need it at this point and with only four cap points they might want that for combat rolls or something so they roll oh and they do they seize the initiative so they will go first now what I wanted to do because I had you guys with me here is I'm gonna draw their cards I did forget to draw cards let's draw the cards real quick Soviet player draws are you kidding I just said Soviet player I don't know why I picked them but look what they drew they drew another free action unbelievable then the German player draws a veteran NCO reroll die after your roll reroll any one die nice that boom that actually might be super useful all right German player has the initiative we're gonna move up a unit the one that isn't stressed we're gonna move him forward because we're gonna try to get to the woods and get closer and he's gonna roll to see if he gets spit he rolled a four I swear I saw it on the one and then it finally flipped so he gets the stress because he did an action now we go to the Soviet player options option oh there is no option they want to get that satchel chart I keep calling it a satchel chart they want to get that satchel of documents into that stone building so they move one movement point so two or higher to not be spent they rolled a four. Oh, they needed a two or higher because he kept the stress mm. let's not forget that now we go back to the German player yeah he needed a two or higher we're good German player moves that unit up. Roll to see if it's spent. Roll to five, it's not spent, but they are stressed. That other unit rested. Back to the Soviet player. Back to the USSR. I am going to move this machine gun unit out of the way. Whoop. Why, you might be asking. Let me roll for their spent. They need a three or higher. Oh, and they moved within the building. So actually, stone building movement cost is one. Uh, so that brought their, they have th three, they needed a four. Okay, they rolled a four. They're fine. But they get that. I did that just to take some stress. I could have passed and then nobody had stress. But then I don't like having stacked units because when you shoot in there, then you get an attack. It's, we'll just have, try to spread them out a little bit. All right, back to the German player. He advances into the woods. That's an action point to move into the woods. So they need to roll a three or higher not to be spent. Come on. They rolled their three, but they get the stress. Okay, back to the Soviet player. We're now moving into the stone building. Boom! We're now going to start accumulating victory points for that. All right, but they need to roll a three or higher not to be spent. They rolled a seven, and they take the stress. Not that they need to go anywhere, but I could leave the, the orders there and then you know move that unit out to start fighting. <sighs> All right, then the German player, boom, move in. They need to roll a three or higher. Oh, let's not forget to flip that. I'm gonna move it out of the way. And they're not spent. All right, then we go back to the Soviet player. Choices to be made. I'm going to spread out. So this unit moves up here they get because they ooh they can now see technically technically I think from this angle here if I went center dot to center dot approximately they can actually see that German unit they can see them moving in the woods so you know what they're gonna do they're gonna move they're gonna move I'll tell you why they're gonna move after I move them they move they need to roll three or higher not to be spent roll to seven 
so they get the stress. I move them because when you have multiple units in a hex and you attack, you get a, a free attack roll against the extra unit. So you like you shoot at a main one and then you actually make an attack roll against everything. But it doesn't generate excess action points or anything like that. It's just basically like free attacks against everything in the hex. So you only have to pay the cost of the attack once. So we want to spread that out. Um, anyway, back to the German player. Oh, that was a Soviet player. I forgot to flip the thing. Back to the German player. So now this is where it gets risky. We got to move up. Let's see if they become spent. That's two. They roll a seven. Oh, these, these are motivated troops. Uh, but they're going to rotate. Now then, everything will be in their front. Then, this unit is going to rotate to face the oncoming threat. That's a movement, so they need to roll a two or higher. They rolled a one. Very unlucky. So they're spent, and they're now stressed from their effort. Then, the German player will move up here. Same thing, they move forward, they rotate, they need to roll a three or higher, and they rolled a six, so they will take the stress marker because the other guy just rested a moment. Now it's back to the Soviet player, and we can start fighting. Now, this unit is going to have to rotate to face the threat because if they don't, the German player is going to fire up and that would be into their flank, and they'll get the lower defense. So they're actually going to go ahead, rotate to face the threat. They need a uh, two or higher, not to become spent. Okay, good. They rolled a three, and they take the stress. Then it goes back to the German player's turn. And now we've got some targets. This unit is spent. If they want to do an action, it's going to use all the cap points, pretty much. So we're going to shoot at the unit that is fresh. And we have choices. I could either shoot at this building or shoot at them. We're going to shoot up at them. So this will be their 12 because they're facing the front. They have 12 defense plus one for the wood building. They're at a 13. You see, I need a, li a little number tracker. Uh, now, I have a four offense. So that means I need a nine to hit. We're not adjacent. So we're looking at a nine. And I'm going to use two cap to bring that to a seven. Seven, seven, seven. Here we go. I rolled an, a nine. Ooh, I didn't have to spin caps, but I hit. Lucky for the German player. So we reach into the random bag here, and I grab pinned. Now that's not too devastating for the Russian player, so we're just going to stick them pinned. If they get hit again then, they will be eliminated. All right, so then the German player will check to see if he's spent. It is four. Four. You need to roll a four or higher because it's three action points for them. Rolls a three. So they are spent. So they did some moving, did some shooting, and he's now stressed. We go back to the Soviet player. They are going to return fire. Return fire. So they have a combat bonus also of four. But what's my defense? My defense, trying to move the marker is also 12. It's actually 13 because I'm in the woods. So it's like the same number. They need a 9 to hit. They're going to spend 2 caps. They now need a 7 to hit. And we rolled a 7. So that was a good spend of cap points. So what happens to that infantry unit? They... Bum, 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 ah, the suppression. I didn't shuffle those very good, I don't think. And we're going to see if that, they it's four action points, so they need to roll a five or higher to not be spent. They rolled a one, so they're spent. And the stress transfers over. Then the German player returns, well, it doesn't return fire, but will attack this unit. So that's also their front. That's why they rotated. So it's 12. It's a 13 because they're in a build. It's nines. It's nines. Nine. So we're going to spend two cap, the last of the cap points. That will make a roll. We need a seven or higher to wound a six. Oh, 
Wow, nothing happens. But they need to roll a four or higher not to be spent. They roll a five, but they do take the stress. Then it goes back to the Soviet player. Uh, those two units are spent, and we do have some cap points, but I need those as bonuses for shooting, I think. So this fresh unit is going to fire into the woods there at that German unit. So um, we're looking, again, it's a 9 because of the 12 defense is 13, subtract 4, that's 9. I hope my math is right. Math was never my strong suit. Uh, but we're going to spend two cap points to drop that to a 7. Okay, do they hit? They rolled a 7. So again, another very wise expenditure of the uh, cap points. And the German play. You know, so far, every one of these I've drawn has come up the surprise me side. That's cool. Suppressed, but is this... Is there something in here other than just suppressed? Alright, so they're suppressed. They're depressed. Then, we're going to roll to see if the Soviets are spent. They need a 5 or higher to stay fresh. They rolled a 5. They're fresh. Wow. They had a good amount of leadership there behind them. Alright. Now, i got to come back here for a moment. I don't have enough cap points. I'm out of cap points. So I can't do anything with that spent unit. N nothing. Um, yeah, because it's... Yeah, nope, they got nothing. Um, but they're fresh, but they have the stress, right? So what we're going to do is look at the cards. NCO, I can reroll one die and then swift action. So I, th and I'm out of caps, I can't even spin the swift action, just try and do two actions back to back. So we're gonna, we're going to attack, so we need a nine. I have no caps to lower that, so this is like the last hurrah right here. Rolled an eight. Now I'm gonna spend their veteran NCO card, I'm gonna re-roll the three. All right, here it comes, what happens? I'm trying to do this on camera so y'all can see it, shake, shake, shake. Five. Look at that. Boom. That is a hit. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot they're they're suppressed. Oh. Subtract two from their firepower. That ten becomes an eight. And that's not enough. Oh, I forgot about that. What a bummer. Yeah. Okay. So never never mind. Well, do they become spent? They need to roll four or higher. Oh, five or higher because they got the stress. And I rolled a one. So they are now spent as well. Spent, stressed, and wounded. That all makes sense narratively. All right. And we go back to this Soviet player. And this unit was fresh. So they're going to they're gonna fire back. So again, they need a nine. And they're going to spend their one cap point to make the magic happen. So they need an eight. They rolled a four, they rolled horribly. And then they're going to see if they're spent. They need a, f they were stressed. So they need a six or higher. They rolled the seven, what? Those are like superhumans. All right, um, if we go back to the German player, German player is, is gonna pass. And because they pass, that gets rid of the stress. Not that that will do them any good. Now what I could do, just to make life easier for them, is do a, not pass, but do a stall. So I'm gonna stall with the maximum machine gun, well I'm gonna stall with the, the submachine gun unit. That is a one AP action, so they need two to stay fresh or they become spent. Whew, they are fine. They're stressed because they technically took an action, oops, and that gave them a chance to rest. That's why I did that, because if I had passed as a rest, that would have ended the round, because the German player had passed. But we wanted to attack with this unit one more time. Like, I could still try to move these folks over to attack, but we're in a good, strong defensive position that we're just going to, you know, ride this out as, as it is. Uh, so we're back to this, where we have a four firepower, we're not adjacent, 
they have the 12 and 13 because they're in the woods. So that's a nine or higher. So they're gonna try to hit. I have no more cap points. It's gotta be a nine or higher. It's a seven. And now we're gonna roll. I need a five or higher, not a six or higher this time because they did rest. And they rolled a seven. So they're still not spent. They did get the stress. Um, you know, and they could go like this for a little bit longer. So let, let's just go one more time here. So the German player passes because they're trying to hopefully force this round to end so they can refresh and try to regroup a little bit. Soviet player says, I'm going to um, not pass, but stall with the submachine gun unit. They roll three. So they stall. Uh, it moves the stress back. They're not spent. German player passes because they want to end the round. The Soviet player will attack again, needing a nine. It's an eight. So very close, but no caps or any card to modify that. Do they become spent? They need a five or higher to remain fresh. They roll the two, so they finally get spent. And they get the stress. Then it goes back to the German player pass, and this time the Soviet player is going to pass. So I just wanted to see what I could do with that unit. Uh, the reason why I'm going to pass and end the round here, and I'm actually going to end this play here for this particular scenario, because the Soviet player is in such a strong position, I find it, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for the German player to recover from that. Wow. So. Uh, at the end of the round, I would advance the victory point tracker up. So by my calculations, if I did right, the German player won. They had three victory points because uh, they got a victory point because the uh, documents are in a building. They did destroy two, two German units. And yeah, that's, that's how that went. Uh, so ultimately, yeah, good. Uh, we'll do a review later. Um, so just some ending of game thoughts here. I, I like it. The stress I thought would be kind of a hassle to track, but with the dice system, I think the stress was important because otherwise these units would be taking a lot more actions. And that stress by giving a, a plus one, so like if you get down to the end and you only have a couple units, that stress does make it a little easier for a unit to become spent if you do somebody back to back. Uh, you know, so ultimately, I mean, I think it's fine. And even having to roll the die, the, the reason why I think this is cool is because, well, I should, I'm gonna save some of those thoughts for the, for the review. So I'm just gonna say that um, this, this is die is not as tedious as I thought it would be. I think it's fine. I do think there might be some people who say, that's a lot of dice rolling, but it's like, yeah, yeah, but it's a game, right? You, you roll dice in a game and I'll, and when I do the review, I'll tell you why I think that this ultimately is worth your time doing as a mechanic. And then how the game plays out in general, it's it's still Conflict of Heroes. It's still Conflict of Heroes. I think it's great. Um, this is still worthy of, you know, introducing new gamers to Wargaming. And with the little change in mechanics, I think it does bring something fresh to the game. And again, I'll go into more details why when we do the review. But I think that ultimately, this this is a much improved version of the game. I, I really think so. And yeah, I, I'm think I'm, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to come back and do a separate review video right after this. So you might see two videos today. I should probably stretch it out and make you wait for, I'll post the review tomorrow, wah, 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 but I'm going to film it right now. So let me pause and come back and film.